This is a brand new Bowman Palace 3 disc and it's proof, if it were needed, that aluminium is still a really good choice for a high speed performance road race bike and a viable alternative to carbon fiber with a performance that is fast and handling that really puts a big smile on your face. And it's great value for money too, with this entire bike costing two and a half thousand pounds or a frame set on its own for 845 pounds if you want to build it your own way. So lots of like, let's dive into my review. But before we do, a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Deckshell. The company makes a wide range of windproof and waterproof gloves, socks, hats, and other products designed to keep you smiling through the winter months. Now, personally, I know just how tough it is to stay warm and dry when it's wet and cold outside, and hand right clothing really makes a difference, and Deckshell really does make a difference. So check out their website, link down below. With all that said, let's dive into the review. When it comes to buying a new road bike, there's a choice of frame material to choose from, but it's important to realize that the frame material itself does not entirely define how the bike rides, but instead, how that material is used and the tube profiles are shaped and so on. When you get above a certain price point though, serious roadies prefer carbon fiber. If using a pro peloton, it's the most desirable material in the bicycle world. But honestly, the bike rides so well, you wonder why you ever looked at carbon fiber and overlooked aluminum where you can get all this performance for such a good price. The Palace is named after a popular criterium circuit in Crystal Palace in South London. Now, many, many years ago, I used to live there and used to race there every Tuesday night. Really good fun, fast, tough circuit. Used to hang on at the back of the bunch most evenings, but really good fun. And the bike is not only named after that circuit, but inspired by the type of bike you need. So it's a really tough circuit, short, with lots of corners, and you need really good bike handling skills, but a bike that corners really well. And that is the essence of this bike. A race bike designed to excel in the corners, and let me tell you, this bike corners exceptionally well. At this point in a bike review, a bike journalist would usually roll out the cliche, it rails on corners, but that's a fair description of the bike. You've got a nice stiff front end to the frame, carbon fork, tapered head tube, and it feels very precise. Got quite fast steering from a geometry as well, so turning is very fast, very easy to move it into the point of the corner where you want to really lean over, get maximum traction from the Conti tires, and really carry as much speed as you can in the corners. Now, unfortunately, due to COVID-19, there's no bike racing on, so I can't really put the bike through its paces, no less at the circuit it's named after. But where I live, got lots of good test loops with a combination of corners from high speed, low speed, different road surfaces, everything you need to really test the handling of the bike. And the bike is easily one of the best cornering, best handling bikes I've tested in a long time. It really is a fun bike to ride, really puts a smile on your face if you like a bike to give you that very direct, very precise handling that a race bike should. And between the corners, the bike gives a surprisingly smooth ride. Now I say surprisingly because aluminum, rather unfairly, has been labeled with a tag of being harsh and overly stiff, but that's not true. It may be true back in the 80s, 90s when aluminum was first developed for road bikes. It's a soft material and to get the stiffness you need in a road bike, you have to oversize the tube profiles. And Cannondale, Klein, companies that really pioneered the use of aluminum, went to massive Coke can sized tubes to get the stiffness, but maybe too much stiffness to give a stiff ride. And that's where the tag has really stuck. But since then, in the last 20, 30 years, tubing manufacturers and bike brands have really finessed and eked out as much ride comfort from an aluminum frame as you get from other frame materials and you can see the tube profiling on display here, and it really does deliver a surprisingly smooth ride. It's as smooth as many carbon bikes I've tested, uh, better in some cases, so a really good smooth ride. So it's fast in the corners, got that handling you want from a race bike, but when you dial it back, you just cruise it along, taking the view, it's nice and smooth and really looks after you. And I've done a four and five hour rides on this bike in total comfort, so no issues there. But let's dive into frame detail a bit more to explore why it's so smooth and why it handles so well. As you can gather from the name, this is a third generation Palace, first launched back in 2015, 2016, my memory is terrible. But third generation bike, totally updated around disc brakes, but worry not, there is a rim brake version as well. So both camps are kept happy with this bike. But the frame is all new. The only thing that's really carried over from the second generation Palace is the geometry. So they've updated it with disc brakes, as you can see, 
We've got 12 mm through axles front and rear, flat mount brake calipers, and really neat internal cable routing compatible with all electronic and mechanical group sets on the market at the moment. They use a 60-69 T6 aluminium tube set, and you really see how they finesse the tube profiles to give that balance of stiffness you want for performance and handling, but also skinny tubes for compliance and comfort. So we've got a flat and rear stays, which go up to the seat tube cluster, nice oversized chain stays, got quite a chunky down tube, a nice slender top tube, a new tapered skinnier head tube, and a nice brand new carbon fiber fork, which flares out a little bit from the front wheel. Really nicely done. I don't often talk about how a bike looks, but I think it's important to share my opinion with you. You might disagree, that's fine, that's what the comment section is for. But I really like the look of this bike. I love the paint job, I love the color, I like the font they use for the logo, I love the pattern on a top tube and a down tube. I love the story behind the pattern, but I love the pattern on its own. So I think the bike as a whole looks really good. And I love the Ride With Spirit tagline, a really nice way of summing up how the bike rides. So yeah, the sums up from me, but what do you think? Let me know down below. And there are lots of sensible details on the bike that I really like. Firstly, an external threaded bottom bracket, so big thumbs up there. An external seat clamp, a nice round 27.2 millimeter seat post, which also give more compliance and comfort. We've got regular bearings in the headset, so they're easy to replace from uh, your local bike shop, so you can maintain the bike very easily. So an easy bike to build up yourself, an easy bike to look after. And it's a bike designed for racing and privateer racers who want to build a robust and fast road bike on a budget, this will definitely appeal. Talking of buying, you can either buy the frame set, the frame and fork for £845, or for the first time, the company is now offering one complete bike, which we have here, costing two and a half thousand pounds, with, as you can see, a Shimano Ultegra mechanical hydraulic disc brake group set. We've got a nice set of noble hand-built wheels, nice tubeless ready rim profile, and I found them to be fast and stiff and durable. A very good set of Continental GP5000 clincher tires, a nice fabric saddle, and a Dada handlebar and stem. So no skimping on the details where you can't see them, all well-known, branded, trusted components. And this size 56 on my scales weighs 8.7 kilograms. So a respectable weight for this price. Certainly the same weight as a carbon frame with a similar group set, but for much, much more money. Let's talk some more about the ride quality. It's lively and a lot of fun. That really is the best way to sum up this palette. It gives all the right sensations. Just enough feedback from the road surface without ever bordering on too much. It's fast as well. The frame displaying all the stiffness to leave you breathless when you're giving it the beams. The handling offers sharp responses to your steering and body weight inputs. It's almost telepathic. Shove it into a high speed corner and it leans in with accuracy and confidence and you can make mid-corner adjustments with ease. All of this makes it a bike that will appeal to first-time bike racers as well as more seasoned and experienced riders. It's a really accessible and friendly bike to ride fast with spirit. So it's very clearly a happy bike going fast, but it also does slow and calm as well, with the comfort refreshingly smooth for an aluminium road bike. It doesn't beat you up. It looks after you on all but the roughest roads. The riding position doesn't feel overly aggressive. I actually found it very comfortable on longer rides. What the Palace really is, is an aluminium race bike, brilliantly executed. It's superior in my mind to the common benchmark, the fabled Cannondale CAD 12, with much more smoothness and more sensible details that I can really appreciate. So in summary then, the Bowman Palace 3 disc is a great handling, high speed performance road race bike that does not cost a fortune. If you want to go racing and you're on a budget or you just want a high speed bike that gives you that entertaining ride you want from a race bike, this bike delivers that in spades. And it's not inferior to carbon fiber in any way, shape or form. In fact, I take the bike over many carbon fiber bikes any day of the week and you save a lot of money in the process. So it looks great, it's sensibly priced, it's well spec it handles fantastically, and it's designed right here in the UK by somebody who really knows their bike design. So lots of things to give the bike a thumbs up for. 
Now, is it a thumbs up from you? Let me know by hitting that like button down below. Um, if you've got any questions or feedback, put them in the comment section there. Let me know what you think of the bike. Love to hear your thoughts as always. And make sure you subscribe for more bike reviews and click that box over there for more bike reviews if you like this review and you want to check out our reviews on my channel. More reviews coming every week, so make sure you hang around. And also follow me on Instagram for behind the scenes, a little uh, first peek at bikes coming in to my bike shed for testing. But that's all for now. I'm going for a little spin. I'll see you all again next time. Thank you for watching.